The user slices that you create in an image, either with the slice tool or with layer-based slicing, will generate JPEGs, GIFs, or PNGs that will become assets in your website. The names of those image files will come from the slice names in your original source file in Photoshop, so it's important to give those user slices meaningful names. You also have some other options that you can add to your slices, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this movie. Here I have a fully sliced web page comp, and I'm ready to add names and other options to the slices. I have to do that slice by slice. So the first thing I'll do is get the Slice Select tool from the toolbox and click on the first slice to which I'm going to add options. I'm going to start here with the slice around this Groundswell logo. With that slice selected, I'm going to go up to the Options bar for the Slice Select tool. And if I move way over to the right in that bar, there's a small icon there. I'm going to click that icon, and that opens the Slice Options dialog box. Here in the Name field, you can see the default name for the selected slice. It's not very meaningful, Slicing 402. It actually comes from the name of the original image, Slicing4.psd, with the slice number 02 tacked on. When I save out this image and generate a GIF from this particular slice, the name of that GIF will be Slicing402.gif. That name isn't very meaningful. If I then bring that GIF into a site building program like Dreamweaver, the name won't tell me anything about the content of the file. So I want to change the name to something more meaningful, like Logo. To do that, I'll just select the default name and type over it. And now when I generate an image from this slice, its name will be logo.gif. Notice that there are some other options here that you can add to this slice. These come into play only if I'm going to ask Photoshop to generate HTML code along with the images created from my slices. And I usually do that if for no other reason than to preview the results, as I'll show you in another movie in this chapter. So what can I include in that HTML? Well, one thing I can include there is a link from the image generated from the selected site to another website. I'm going to click in the URL field, and I'm going to type out the full path to an external website. I'm going to use the lynda.com site by typing the full path to the home page on that site. And if I want that linked to web page to come up in a separate browser window, I can go to this target field and type underscore blank. I'm also going to fill in the alt tag field here with a description of the image that will be created from this selected slice. I'm going to type groundswell logo. The alt tag is important because that offers some text that can be read by a reading machine that's used to make the web more accessible to those who are visually impaired. Now that I've added those options, I'm going to click OK to close the Slice Options dialog box. To show you what those Slice Options do, I'm going to preview my web page comp now just to show you what those Slice Options have done. So I'm going to go into the Save for Web and Devices window by choosing File, Save for Web and Devices. And at the bottom of that window, I'm going to go down and click on the Preview button. That opens the web page comp in my default web browser, and some of it doesn't look very good because I haven't yet optimized these sliced areas. But what I wanted to show you now is that if I move my mouse over the Groundswell logo, it changes to this hand icon, meaning that this is a live link. And if I click there, a separate web browser window opens, displaying the lynda.com web page to which I linked back in Photoshop. I'll go ahead and close that browser window, and I'm also going to close this other page in my web browser. And back in the Save for Web and Devices window, I'm going to click the Cancel button to go back to Photoshop. Normally, I would go ahead and choose each one of my user slices one at a time, open the Slice Options dialog box, name the slice, and add any other slice options that I wanted to. Back here in Photoshop, at this point, I would normally continue to select each user slice one at a time to give it a meaningful name and to add slice options like the ones I've shown you in this movie. When all that's done, I would then optimize and save the multiple slices in this image, as I'll show you how to do in an upcoming movie in this chapter.